uh, and welcome everybody. Well, happy new year. Uh, I know we are, what are we, 12 days in, uh, but it's really good to be joined by, by all of you. I know we have uh, some returning uh, senior uh, ambassadors, senior vote ambassadors from 2022 and all of our great work. Uh, but welcome everybody and thank you for being here. Uh, my name is Dwayne, uh, for those of you who haven't uh, got to know me just yet. Um, and uh, I'm very excited to sort of take you through our selection process. Um, our senior vote campaign uh, is targeting really five. So Bowser mentioned that in California, we are, uh, I guess, burdened uh, with a tremendous opportunity uh, to help take back uh, Congress, right? And even though I have to say at, at the front, Cara, we do not endorse candidates uh, for elected office. However, uh, our parent affiliate, the Alliance for Retired Americans do. And so I'll be taking you through actually some of the scores uh, that the ARA uh, has for some of the incumbents in the districts that we're targeting. Uh, and again, these are issues just like uh, uh, Bowser mentioned around uh, protecting our earned benefits, Social Security, uh, Medicare, et cetera. But this forum is really about introducing our senior vote campaign for 2024 and taking advantage of that tremendous opportunity uh, that has fallen uh, to California. So there are five districts, congressional districts, uh, that we're going to be targeting. And so I'll be sharing my screen uh, in a second. And uh, after I go through the presentation, we're actually going to be uh, hearing testimonials from two of our members uh, who reside in some of these districts and just why it is so important uh, that CARA engage in this work and reach out to senior voters in these districts. So I will be sharing my screen in a second here. Let's see. There we go. And let me just move my stuff around. All right. So our 2024 uh, target races. And again, I'm going to be taking you through our five uh, target uh, regions. But first, let's talk about our process. And it's very similar to our work in 2022. Uh, it's really a collaborative process. Uh, but we, this year, uh, we've taken it a, a few steps further, as Bowser was alluding to. Uh, we reviewed pollster data, we reviewed nonpartisan political forecasting, which is just a fancy way of saying. Uh, what, uh, you know, finding a way to sort of forecast out, you know, factoring in the projected turnout for the general election, uh, what things may look like. And so we took all of that data, uh, coupled with the input from our members, of course, uh, and all of that uh, was reviewed by our executive committee and our executive board. So again, it was a very uh, thoughtful, methodical uh, and collaborative process with determining which districts we are going to target. Uh, and obviously, again, these districts align uh, with, I think, the seven or eight uh, congressional districts in California uh, that are among the national uh, targets that everybody is going to be watching. So I'm, I'm going to be introducing a few maybe new terms for folks, and I'll, I'm going to take it slow and bring everybody uh, along for the ride. Uh, but basically, what was the criteria for the priority races? Well, essentially, they lined up in, in one of these ways. Uh, they are either deemed a toss-up district, they either lean uh, Democratic or are likely uh, Democratic. I'll go over what the differences uh, between each one of those terms are and what that really means for us. And the district boundaries, they have to be within one of our CAT uh, areas, right? That's a, that is how we were so successful uh, in 2022. Uh, and again, taking that together with the senior voting trends over the last two general elections, plus sort of factoring in the composition of the voter electorate this year, right? So not only taking into account the senior voting trends uh, in previous general elections, but what does that look like for this year? Because again, uh, this is the second year, the second election cycle in these newly uh, minted districts, right? So now we have a little bit more data to work with. Uh, and of course, the race has to be pivotal to the overall balance of power in Congress. 
uh, which uh, Bowser had alluded to. So those, uh, again, were really the criteria that we were looking at, again, coupled with uh, all of the uh, input uh, from our partners uh, and our members who live in these districts. So breaking down uh, what John had alluded to, this is essentially what uh, I'm using the Cook Report here, which is a uh, sort of like the leading nonpartisan political forecasting summary. So it, it, I'm, I'm trying not to get too technical here, but wanted to visually take you through sort of what uh, it's looking like right now. So uh, on the right hand side of your screen, essentially the way the projections are right now, there are 191 uh, seats in Congress that are, that are projecting to be solidly Republican. And on the left hand side, we have 170 seats that are projected to be solidly Democrat, as in uh, not very competitive for candidates of the other party. So uh, it, for California, we have a lot of Democratic districts. Uh, it will probably, the projections will, will lean into uh, that district staying Democrat and so on and so forth. But where it gets interesting is the more you move towards the center, uh, the colors are, the, the shading is a little bit lighter. So you have likely, Right. And so basically, that means that uh, they're not these races are considered super competitive, but they have potential uh, to be competitive for various reasons. And I know for a fact on, on the right hand side uh, of this bar, on the Republican side, we know that, uh, you know, congressional representatives have not had a great track record on just about anything uh, relating to uh, CARA's issues. And then the further towards the center we go, we have the lean. And this is what this is really important. Lean means that these races are considered competitive races, but one party has an advantage, right? That could be uh, based on registration uh, numbers, obviously voting trends from previous elections, uh, what have you. Um, but again, this is where uh, we really want to focus in on the lean districts, uh, and then the toss-up. This is it, right? This is where you know that most competitive. Uh, races taking into uh, taking into account all of these various factors, um, but either party has a shot. That's essentially what the toss up means. And in California, we have a couple toss up and a couple lean races that we're going to be uh, talking about here. But before I get before I get into the actual districts that we've chosen, the last uh, term I want to explain because you're going to see this on the slides are going to be sort of the PVI. So you're gonna see a D plus two or an R plus four. What does that mean? Essentially, it means how does this district uh, compare to uh, other districts nationally? So for example, on the right-hand side of your screen, uh, a D plus two, for example, means that in 2016 and 2020 presidential elections, that district performed an average of two points more democratic than the nation did as a whole. Right. And then R plus four, uh, very similar. So that is going to I'm trying to uh, trust me, I, I'm trying to build up the optimism uh, here for some of these races, because you're going to see exactly how uh, this comes into play and just why there is a, a huge opportunity before us to really take back some seats. So let's start with uh, Central Valley. So Central Valley CAP members, buckle your seat belts. I know you're ready for this <laughs> anyway, and you're probably uh, assuming what district we're going to be targeting. Well, let's start with uh, Congressional uh, District 13, CA13. Uh, on the left-hand side uh, of the slide, we have uh, what we tried to pull a really solid uh, district map here. Uh, but the incumbent, uh, John Duarte, uh, he took office in 22. Um, but what was interesting about the 2022 midterm, and now we got the same candidates coming back. This is uh, John Duarte, uh, Adam Gray, round two. If you're a boxing fan, if you're a sports fan like I am, this is exciting, right? Um, but what was very interesting, getting to Bowser's point again, in 2022, uh, Duarte only won by, I think, less than a thousand votes. And not only that, but as it relates to our senior vote campaign, over 53% of the voting electorate in this district were over the age of 55. And I believe 30% were over the age of 65. I mean, we're really getting into it here. And then again, on the top right-hand score, the voter index is a D plus four, 
uh, district. That's the projection. It's projected to be a toss up district. It's going to be very competitive. Uh, obviously, right now, I don't want to get folks to get too caught into the fundraising numbers. This is based off of uh, quarter three last year. It's not updated to the current quarter yet. Uh, but obviously, uh, Duarte is at a competitive advantage uh, at about, you know, probably close to two mil around this point, if not more. Uh, but Adam Gray, former assembly member in the California State Assembly, uh, this is a rematch uh, from 2022. And again, our Central Valley members, this is uh, a huge opportunity. And uh, we are looking to engage, again, 53% of the voting electorate in the midterms for this district were over the age of 55. Real opportunity for our senior vote uh, campaign to make a difference. So that's the, the first of five. Now, sort of Fresno Kern uh, priority target, no surprise here, I think. Uh, district California, uh, District 22, CA 22. Uh, the incumbent, our favorite, right? <laughs> David uh, Valadeo, we'll be hearing from uh, Imelda uh, uh, in a little bit about uh, her experiences living <laughs> in this district, uh, specifically under uh, uh, David Valadeo. Um, but uh, again, this is a D plus Five. It's another toss-up uh, projected district. Huge opportunity uh, for us here. And as you can see, uh, highlighted in sort of the light red, our partner, uh, our parent affiliate, the Alliance for Retired American, they do a scorecard, a congressional scorecard every year. And uh, they haven't produced a 2023 scorecard yet. And that's okay. But in 2022, uh, David Valadeo scored a whopping 30% with a lifetime score of 11%. So if you're wondering not only why we are targeting these districts and why uh, these incumbents are so dangerous, not only to democracy, uh, but to our communities uh, and they're failing to uphold our values as constituents, uh, these scores really put things into perspective uh, for CARA and for the ARA. Again, lifetime score of 11%, that is really hard to earn. <laughs> um, now, in 2022, again, we have a rematch here as well uh, between, uh, well, actually we have two, uh, the, the Dem primaries are gonna be interesting, but potentially a rematch between Valadeo and Rudy Salas. But in 2022, it was so tight um, that uh, Valadeo won by less than 3000 votes. And again, I think I'll, I'll put this out here for all of us. In 2022, this is one of the lowest uh, turnout midterms in uh, the history of California. So imagine if turnout was a little bit better or even on trend, um, you know, Valadeo uh, may have been ousted uh, by Rudy Salas. So again, uh, very close district, over 52% of the electorate in the midterm uh, were over the age of 55. And again, I think the over 65 numbers for this district is about 26%. That's huge. So again, huge opportunity uh, for us. And in the primary, you have Rudy Salas uh, and uh, Melissa Hurtado, both former representatives uh, in the California legislature. Orange County, get excited, uh, our orange folks. Uh, this is interesting. Uh, this is Katie Porter's current uh, seat, Congressional District 47. Um, and despite all of the, I mean, you can see um, uh, on our slide here, 100% score in 2022 from the ARA and 100% lifetime score uh, from the ARA. I don't think um, I need to <laughs> go into the many accomplishments of Katie Porter on behalf of working people and on behalf uh, of seniors specifically um, in Congress. And obviously she is running for the Senate, but that opens up her congressional seat. Uh, and again, this is a lean down, so it's not quite... Um, you know, we would have loved for this district to not be competitive for Republicans, but but it is. Uh, and so uh, right now we have uh, two primary candidates, uh, Dave Min and uh, Jessica Weiss. Uh, the fundraising numbers, again, this is not super up to date, but just to provide a snapshot as to where uh, we are in terms of the fundraising. Um, they are neck and neck as of this point. And Scott Baugh, uh, who ran unsuccessfully. Uh, against Katie Porter in 2022 is back at it again. So 56% uh, of this district uh, uh, who voted in uh, 2022 are over the age of 55. Again, tremendous opportunity here, but we need to defend 
uh, this seat in particular. Placer County, okay. Placer County is very interesting because the, the data is going to look a little different <laughs> than the trend thus far. Um, but for those of you who uh, are uninitiated into Placer County politics, let me just tell you that the incumbent Kevin Kiley is a problem. Uh, not only uh, in his uh, time in Congress, uh, but also as a former assembly member uh, for this very region. And we can, I will leave all those details uh, to Diana Madoshi, who will uh, be presenting soon uh, on her experiences uh, living in the district. Um, but we, uh, we engaged in a very successful uh, senior vote effort in 2022. Uh, in this district. Uh, and again, with all of the opportunities uh, that are out there in California, we think there's a real chance uh, to go after this seat because uh, of the excitement around the uh, primary candidate, uh, Jessica Morse, who ran, I believe, in 2016, uh, unsuccessfully at the time, but is a tremendous candidate uh, whose family has deep roots in the district. But here's the opportunity for, for Cara. Over 61% of the uh, voting electorate in the midterm were over the age of 55. And that number is a whopping 35% over the age of 65. I mean, Cara, this is us. This is our, these are our, <laughs> this is our target right here. Now, again, the uh, projection uh, is likely Republicans at R plus four is a very, very, very conservative uh, district. But again, comparing uh, Kylie's, Kevin Kylie's abysmal record on all of our issues uh, really does uh, shed light and give us an opportunity uh, to really work the senior vote campaign uh, and change some hearts and minds in this district. Um, now, our senior vote campaign, and Jody will talk more about this in a second, uh, not only it's primarily directed towards the congressional districts, but we also have the opportunity to work uh, the state and local races within that jurisdiction. So sticking with Placer County, um, Assembly District 5, uh, who the incumbent Joe Patterson, um, he's running for his second term. He replaced Kevin Kiley uh, after he went to Congress. Um, on our, this is a spoiler alert, but our 2023 legislator scorecard, which we'll be releasing soon, stay tuned, uh, he scored a whopping 28%. <laughs> Pretty hard to do considering the amount of bills that we scored this year. A whopping 28%. Um, again, we won decisively in 2022 with 60%. Uh, and again, over 60% um, of the voting electorate in this district are over the age of 55. So, uh, and again, uh, lots of excitement around, as a typo there, around the Democratic uh, challenger, Neva Parker, uh, as well. So very excited about the opportunities in Placer County, uh, and we will keep it moving. LA, let's get right into it. Uh, LA, we're, we are back at it, another 2022 priority district. We are back again. Uh, Congressional District 27, CA 27. This is a toss up. Uh, Mike Garcia uh, is like Kevin Kiley and John Duarte uh, is a problem, continues to be a problem. Uh, the ARA score, again, that's our parent affiliate uh, in 2022 uh, for Mike, 30% and a lifetime score of 20%. I mean, you really have to work hard to be that bad on these issues. Um, won decisively in 2022, 53%, but again, over 55% of the voting electorate uh, in 2022 was over the age of 55. Uh, and we have uh, a great uh, candidate uh, who's going to be uh, probably uh, leading on, on the, the Dem ticket, uh, George Whiteside. So very excited about the opportunity here. And like Placer, uh, we will also be uh, focusing in on Assembly District 40. Again, if you, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna put that slide back. Look at the map here for uh, District 27. All right, and then look at the map for some district 40. Very, very, very similar, lots of crossover. Uh, and the incumbent is an incredible legislator, somebody who not only has sponsored uh, at least two of uh, CARA's bills, but also saw them through and they passed 
Um, but what was amazing about this race in 2022, this was a district that the incumbent Pilar Schiavo flipped from Republican uh, to Democrat and won with less than 600 votes uh, difference. So uh, a, a, this is a target for Republicans. Um, right now, uh, she has a competitive advantage in terms of fundraising, uh, but a 100% score on our scorecard, considering this was her first year uh, in office, incredibly impressive. Um, but again, the, the, the crossover between the two districts, uh, 80, 40, and then again, the Congressional District 27 um, provides a lot of opportunity for us to consolidate our resources uh, and make an impact. Uh, so, and not only that, the other thing that I mentioned is that the composition of these districts are changing. Uh, and we have to be aware of that. And that really yields more of an opportunity uh, for us. You see that the I, that was selective with the color uh, here, but 80-40, I, I colored it purple. Uh, it's really leaning more, it's leaning more blue, I think, uh, by the day. Uh, same with uh, CD-47, Katie Porter's district. Um, but lots of opportunities here. Hopefully, uh, me breaking down some of this uh, nerdy political jargon, uh, but really the data helps shed some light on just uh, how viable uh, these races are.